Hey everyone. Today we're going to look at how we can add homebrew rules for classes, races, and so forth to DM Hub. So I asked some of our users what they would like to see, and somebody said that they would love to see the Warforge class from uh, Eberron Writhing from the Last War. Just an example of how to implement it. So I got out my Eberron Writhing from the Last War book, and I'm referring to it, and in our little tavern here we have Firiona, who is an elf, uh, except we're going to give her a bit of a, a change and we're going to make her into a Warforged instead. So if we go to her character builder, you can see that she's, a re uh, she's an elf and she gets all of the sort of elvish abilities. Uh, but we're going to add Warforged as an option uh, and we do that by going to our library. And then in our library, we go to races. And this is a list of the races that are available in your game. To add a new race to your game, just hit the little plus button and a new race will come up and we're going to call it the Warforged. Uh, and then we can, you can put a detailed description for your race. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put this in for now. Uh, and then if you want your race to have random names, uh, what you can actually do is you can go to the name generators table and here we have all sorts of uh, names so we have tables full of names and you could add a whole Eberron name table. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now instead I'm just going to uh, we could leave it blank but I'm going I'm going to say that uh, Eberron characters just uh, sorry uh, Warforged characters get dragonborn names. Uh, and so our Warforged is a medium creature. Uh, and we, we don't we don't do any random generation of heights, but I'm just going to say that they're about 6'5". Uh, and then their walking speed, I see, is 30 feet, uh, and they don't have dark vision. So the first thing that a Warforged gets is ability score increase. Your constitution score increases by 2, and one other ability score of your choice increases by 1. So firstly, I'm going to add the constitution uh, increase. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add, add a feature and the feature is going to modify an attribute and it's going to add uh, to constitution, um, it is going to add two. Uh, and it automatically fills in this description for us, which is nice. Uh, and so then in addition, they can choose one other ability score to increase by one. So we have this ability score increase and this is a choice where they get to choose, and by default this lets us choose two, two uh, attributes, but we, we just want to allow them to choose one attribute. Uh, and they have to choose something other than constitution. So I'm going to delete this constitution from the list, and they have to choose uh, one, one of these other options. Then the next thing that they get is uh, they get a feature called constructed resilience. I think this is probably their most interesting feature. So constructive resilience, what it says is that uh, you were created to have remarkable fortitude uh, represented by the following benefits. They have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned uh, and they have resistance to poison damage. Okay, so advantage on saving throws, that is a d20 roll. So we want to modify a certain type of d20 roll for them. So we add this modify d20 rolls, but we'll change it to only modify saving throws and only modify saving throws against being poisoned. Uh, and then uh, what we want to do is when they encounter such a saving throw, they get advantage. We could put like, if this said give them plus four against that, we could put plus four. But uh, it says they get advantage. Uh, and then we want it, uh, that's, that's all we, there's no additional conditions on this, they just always get this against being poisoned. Uh, so that's great. And then they also have resistance to poison damage, so that's another behavior. Uh, so we want to give them uh, damage resistance. Uh, and so we add a damage resistance modifier, and so they're resistant to poison damage. And then they also... Uh, they don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, which is more of a role-playing thing. That's not something that we automate. But they are immune to disease. And then you don't need to sleep, and magic can't put you to sleep. In DM Hub terms, that basically means that they're also immune to being uh, to sleep. Uh, so anything that tries to make them sleep uh, won't work. So to do that, we add an immunity to conditions. 
And disease, technically in D&D, disease isn't really a condition as such, but we, we just treat it as a condition. And the same for sleep, so, uh, so immunity condition. So any time somebody tries to put the disease or sleep condition on them, uh, it just won't work. Uh, and so that's that for that feature. Uh, and then they get uh, another feature called Sentry's Rest. And Sentry's Rest... It says when you take a long rest, you must spend at least six hours in an inactive motionless state rather than sleeping. Um, th this is more of a role-playing thing. Uh, this isn't something that we have any automated rules for, uh, but we, were, we, we include this and it will show up on their character sheet and everything. Uh, and then we want to add integrated protection. So integrated protection, it does several, several things. Um, but from the DM hub point of view, uh, mostly it just gives them uh, a plus one bonus to armor class. Uh, so, uh, so there's some rules about only being able to dom armor, which you with which you have proficiency. Which that's that's more some we're, we're not going to restrict you from putting on armor or anything like that. Um, that's more of a role playing thing in between you and your game master. So we just have this simple gain a plus one bonus to armor class. So. Uh, so this means that we just modify armor class as considered an attribute, and we just add one to armor class. Um, so that's that's pretty simple. Uh, then this specialized design, which says you gain one skill proficiency and one tool proficiency of your choice. So this is uh, so any any skill um, is something. And if if there was a restriction on skills, you would just add this any skill, and then you would just delete the ones that they're not not allowed to do. That's the easiest way to do it. And then uh, a tool proficiency, so uh, one tool, and that'll give them a choice of all these different tools. Uh, and then uh, they have languages. They can, they can, um, they know common, so we will add that as a as a feature. Um, and so we just uh, so languages are under uh, as a modifier we put that under proficiencies um, and type language and they know common and then uh, and then also uh, it says one other language of their choice so we put any language and then just to be thorough uh, we can delete common from the list since they already know common. Uh, and they'll get to choose one other language. Uh, and so once we have done all of that, we should be able to close this out. And we will need to, after making a big rule change like that to apply to a character, we need to either exit and enter the game again or just press F5 to refresh DM Hub. Uh, and now DM Hub has refreshed. And if we go into our character sheet, we should be able to go and now see Warforged as a option here. And all of the options that, that she had for Elf uh, have now been replaced by Warforged options. Uh, she gets to choose a skill. Um, she gets to choose uh, tools that she knows how to use. Uh, she gets to choose a language that she knows. Uh, and then she gets to choose, she, she automatically gets some constitution, and then she gets to choose uh, an, an ability to increase. Uh, and we'll see that her, her uh, stats are appropriately increased, her armor class uh, is now at a, at a 13. Uh, you'll see that if you click on it, it tells you exactly why. It's the, the plus one from being Warforged that gets her to 13. Uh, she's resistant to poison damage, and she's immune to disease and sleep. Uh, and and if, 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 if everything is correct from her being warforged. And the cool thing is that not only does it put her on put it on her character sheet, but any time you have a combat in DM Hub, if she took some poison damage, uh, it will automatically reduce it appropriately. Uh, so so you, you so by by doing what we've done, uh, any character who's warforged will get uh, will, will get the benefits of DM Hub's automation system. So with that, uh, you should be able to make races, classes, backgrounds, whatever else you want to do with DM Hub's homebrew system.